some interesting, you know, and interesting stuff after being out for a year. He's awesome. And Andrew and I were sitting there and that's all I kept saying was this yep. guy is awesome. <laughs> Can confirm. And the, the <laughs> juxtaposition of watching Zion who hadn't played in over a year and Ben Simmons who hasn't played in like a year and a half was really something because Zion looked like he just hit the ground literally running and doing whatever he wanted offensively. And the Nets didn't have an answer. And Ben Simmons looks like he's got a lot of rust in his game that he's going to have to knock off. And to the point about uh, the the amount of shots they were getting and the possessions, and Andrew noted the shot clock that they practice with the Pelicans do, what it reminds me of, guys, is like one of these college football offenses where you get the, the run and gun, either coordinator or coach in there, and all they're trying to do the whole game is just run you. And they have the guns offensively to do it. Zion is an absolute superstar if he stays healthy. But it was really something interesting. And, B, you've covered the, lo- the league longer than both of us. The stars always know. And in the lead-up to that New Orleans game, KD, while he's saying Zion's one of one, incredible player, yep. looking forward to seeing him, he's also saying in the same breath, they also have Brandon Ingram, who he loves, and C.J. McCollum, who he loves. So we could talk about Herb Jones and the defense that he gives his team and the pace they want to play with under Willie Green. All well and good, but they have three offensive weapons that can get seemingly whatever they want whenever they want it. And that was Kevin's point, and I think that was really crucial when you're trying to see not only what the Pelicans are now, but what they could continually build upon throughout the year and be in the postseason. Uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm close to issuing an edict. I'm going to say this for a few weeks, and I probably won't do it. But I'm close to issuing an edict banning Laker talk until they're relevant. Please, um, God, I <laughs> but I have enough to say, on the Lakers. I don't even want to. Um, I don't even want to mention the Lakers. They're horrible. Well, you just you did it, you said it twice. I so I'm um, done. There you go. <laughs> um, I do I do think it's relevant to talk about the Laker game Sunday night, only to say that Dame Lillard, who I d- was a little bit worried about in the preseason, because he's coming off the the, uh, the abdominal surgery and he just he didn't look good. He didn't play that much in the preseason, but he shot the ball really poorly. He's had back to back forty point games and he just got named Player of the Week. That's what I would be talking about coming out of the Laker game. But I do think it's important to point out. Um, uh, Andrew, that the Pelicans own the Lakers pick swap this year. Yeah, um, one of my favorite things on on Twitter so far has been Laker fans who think, "Oh, okay, we can we'll, we'll just be bad this year. We'll tank for Wimbenyama, and then then it's Pelican fans who are quick to uh, to get in there and remind them that you you cannot tank for Victor. Right, it's you, an unprotected pick to. swap. Um, I'm fairly certain I should have checked before I say this, and I'll probably get a this will probably run. I'll get a text from Bobby Marks. Fairly certain you can trade that swap. Um, and one of the things that I've talked about as I've evaluated this team throughout the league is because I think that, you know, we're, I think we're going to see some maneuvering this year. When I judge how, how teams are going to be, I think about um, what they can do in the season to improve. Now the, the Pelicans are fairly deep, yeah. um, but the interesting thing about them is they have some tradable contracts. Um, although less since they extended guys like, like Larry Nance would have been one. They extended him, but they have Devonte Graham um, who, you know, they have extra guards um, and they have extra first round picks that they own beyond theirs. And they have that pick swap, which would be extremely valuable. So I'm not saying they're going to trade it. I'm just saying yeah. that. I would, I would highly, uh, I think they like, they like that positioning right now. <laughs> well, in, a, in the Wemby Yama draft, I agree, but I'm just saying like, not only are the Pelicans, um, you know, in, in, in have good depth and everything like that, but I mean, they're right. upwardly mobile with what they can do. The only thing about the Pelicans is spending. They've never been a tax paying team. And so I don't think you're going to see, um, them necessarily take on a whole bunch more money. They're kind of up against it when they, uh, uh, but there was a reason why that Durant was mentioned about the Pelicans when, um, yeah. and I mean, I would not trade Brandon Ingram. I would not trade Brandon Ingram for Kevin Durant. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, 
So if that was, but I'm just saying there was a reason why the Pelicans were mentioned as a, as a possible Durant location, because not only, because they're just, not only do they have the, the, uh, the team that Durant might be want to play for, but they have the ammunition to do a trade. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN plus.